And there we have it. The program that uh, the program has revealed the hidden message and sent it to the top secret file.txt in our known directory. So let's have a look, shall we? It reads Hello everyone. Here we will describe some of the many means of steganography and we'll see many examples. So just to review, the point of using steganography is to hide a message inside a larger, usually unrelated context. So using software, uh, we can hide a secret message in a certain medium. And in the modern age, this is very often images, audio files, and video files. A common example of hiding a message is within an image. Different ways of encoding images are BMP, which is a bitmap, GIF, which is a graphic interchange format, and also JPEG, and many others. These two formats are considered lossless, that's bitmap and graphic interchange, are considered lossless encodings, because basically there's no information that is lost if we have an image in that format, or, or convert to that format. And JPEG is considered a, what we call a lossy kind of encoding of an image, because there's some information that is lost if we were to convert to a JPEG. Now, under a 24-bit color system, we can represent an image with pixels, so you can sort of consider one full image with some sort of uh, width and height. And obviously it's, it's composed of pixels in what is sometimes called a 24-bit color system. Each pixel is actually represented by three bytes. And this makes sense, of course, because uh, one byte is by definition equal to eight bits. So if we were to take three of them, we'd get 24 bits in total, representing a pixel. And what's additionally interesting about this is that when we consider a byte, we can, you know, obviously, as I just mentioned, we can consider eight individual bits that compose it. And we can, cons we can consider these to be sort of arranged in a certain order. Uh, so basically we can have eight slots, each of which can be either a zero or a one. What this means is that basically there are, are independent choices of whether a bit has the value zero or one. And so as a result, the total number, we can consider basically the total number of possibilities, or number of distinct bytes, as being 2 to the 8th, or in other words, 256. And so, basically, if we assume that one byte corresponds to one particular integer, seeing as, you know, this whole thing is sort of being represented in binary, with zeros and ones, and what we know, as a result, is that basically each byte represents an integer that is somewhere between 0 and 255. Because, of course, if all of these were zero, we would get zero, so that's that one boundary. The, the number represented would be zero. And if all of these values were one, then basically we get 255. And obviously the reason for that is just that if we write it in base two, we start with the number of ones here, the number of twos here, and then fours, 8s, 16s, 32s, 64s, and 128s. I hope that that's uh, clear enough for you to see. But that's just how place value works in, in binary. We have the number of 1s, the number of 2s, the number of 4s, 8s, 16s, 32s, 64, and 128s that compose a number. Now, the reason we have three of these bytes making up one individual pixel is actually because we use one byte 
to represent the red component in a pixel, another for the green component, and another for blue. You'll very often see this as basically RRGGBB notation for basically a color, and this is considered the 24-bit color system, or, or the, you know, the, the system where we can have any number up to 255 of each color. And it's a very, very commonly used system, believe it or not. And of course, you know, each of these basic colors uh, is given one byte of storage, which explains why the number, you know, the number composing red can go up to 255, Number of green is independent of that. It can also go up to 255. Blue can also be up to 255. So this is, you know, this is very interesting how we can encode colors, you know, the color of a, uh, of a pixel in just three bytes. However, what we can do in steganography is modify some of these bytes in the colored image in order to hide data in this medium. So I'll move this up. And a very basic form of steganography is to modify what we call the least significant bit, or LSB, of a byte. Basically, it's of each byte in a colored image. And what this very often is, is really the last bit. Because, of course, that's, as we see up here, that is the, basically, the one's place value. So, the idea is that adjusting or, or changing that one least significant bit will have a very, very small effect on the overall image, as we'll see in a moment. And I, in fact, wrote a Java program that uses this idea in steganography in order to hide any text message inside a carrying image. I can put the link to the program in the description, but generally, when I ran it on a basic colored picture that I created in Microsoft Paint, it returned the image on the right. So clearly the use of least significant bit steganography can adjust an image very, very slightly without any noticeable difference to the naked eye. And for the record, the message I encoded was all in capital letters, run east at 6. It could have been anything, though. One can also download software in order to do more complicated steganographic calculations. For instance, the software OpenPuff version 4.0 can hide information in a media file of many different possible types. This is clearly, as, as we'll see, much more complex than the program that I wrote. But to show a demonstration, I'll show you a screencast, actually. Uh, basically, I'll show you my uh, computer screen, and we'll see what we can do from there. So here's the program right here. Uh, we can select hide under steganography right here and then we can use up to three passwords to make this process more secure uh, so in this case let's use the passphrases discrete and math class I'll actually just use two of these uh, because I want to make sure because there's actually a, a minimum length requirement for these passwords so I don't want to just say math as my password that's not long enough so basically I'll just have to remember I'm typing this in right um, discrete and math class alright <laughs> and then we can fill out the rest of this data now let's select the, uh, the file there's actually a .txt file that I created in advance, so let me just find that for you. And then a photo, which I'll choose right as we speak, because it says uh, uh, carrier selection, which is order sensitive. Oh, never mind. That doesn't work. I have to use a larger file. Okay. I didn't see that coming. Hang on. Now i got to choose something else. How about uh, this one? No. Doesn't work either. Okay, here we go. We're back. Uh, I found an image that was large enough. It happens to be a photo of Fibonacci, or rather, a, I suppose, a, a drawing of the famous mathematician Fibonacci, the one who brought the Arabic numerals to Europe back around the 14th century. But, anyways, 
Uh, I digress. Okay, now we need to select what kind of file type it is and how many bytes we want to replace in the carrying image. So I just typically use a default. We know this is actually a JPEG, so interestingly enough, this program even has ways of using steganography even if it is a JPEG, which is somewhat remarkable. But of course, there are many different types, as you can see listed here. There's like PDF files, uh, MP4, MP3, uh, Wave audio. That's a, that's a very common one uh, that that you'll see for uh, steganography and how you can you know bitmap image. That's that's a very very common one for steganography. Um, but yeah, that's that's my point. This this program deals with so many different types of carrying files, basically, or carrier files. So then we can click hide. Hide data. Oh, uh, we need to select a directory for it. Okay. One out of one carrier processed. All right. So this is this is the task completed alert. So that's, that's very nice. It, it uh, works successfully. And from here, suppose that this image has been sent via the internet or perhaps through email or on a website or social media, etc. Now, pretending we're the recipient of such an image and we think there may be some hidden message inside it, we can select reveal in this same program. So if we say, okay, oh, well, of course, this is the, this is the actual, actual report, the task report, so that's very good to see. If we can say close and actually say reveal or unhide, we need to make sure we know the passwords, of course. So again, assuming I type them in correctly, let me just do that again. Okay, and then from here, after we enter the passwords, all we need to do is actually select the photo Hold on. Okay, so here it is, Fibonacci.jpg. Again, we would need the correct passwords in order for this to work, but assuming that these two parties, the sender and recipient, have established that ahead of time, we can proceed and say unhide. All right, I'll, I'll select the directory again. There we go. Now unhiding. And here we go. Now it's the task report successful. And so it says there was a hidden file. Uh, the name is topsecretnote.txt, size 35 bytes, and some other information that I don't quite understand yet. But okay, so the name is topsecretnote in that directory. So I'm going to say done, and I'm going to look for that right where we told it to output the secret message. So give me one moment to find that. And here we go. We actually see it right here, topsecretnote.txt, formed at 6.53 p.m., so just now. <laughs> So I'm just I'm just trying to verify that you know demonstrate to you that this this was literally just created just now, and we're actually going to double click, and there we have it, the program that uh, the program has revealed the hidden message and sent it to the top secret file .txt in our known directory. So let's have a look, shall we? It reads, the treasure is hidden at the big W, whatever that means. Well, thank all of you for your attention, and I'll see you later.